Hi guys, it's Mark here from Dragon Image and we're here at IBC 2014 and I'm on the Arja stand with Andy. Andy, um, the Scion. Uh -huh. Lots of hype about this camera, lots yep. of buzz since uh -huh. the announcement. This is my first time actually seeing it in the flesh. Okay, right. It's Getting beautiful. Close, yeah. yeah, it's actually nicer in the in the flesh than what it is. We appreciate that. On, Thank you very on much. Film. Uh -huh. um, I've actually thrown on on my shoulder. It was actually uh -huh. a dummy that was on uh -huh. another stand, oh, and okay, I got to put yeah. it on my shoulder and yeah. have a bit of a play with it. Feels great ergonomically. Super light. Um, but I think um, what I'd like to ask you um, a little bit more about technical specs. Sure. Uh, features on the on the camera mm -hmm. no um, and applications. Uh, what sure. like what suitable applications do you think this camera would uh, be able to sure. handle? So yeah, if I'll let you just uh, run run down the line. Yeah, of course, no problem at all. I mean, Scion in essence has been designed as to come after sort of the the way that Super 60 millimeter cameras freed everybody up from the larger S35 original film cameras. Super 16 was a new lease of life. People were able to run and gun get the shoulder mount view, the subjective view of the world. Scion follows on from that. There was a lean period where, and obviously you're using a 5D today to shoot this. Um, DSLRs changed the way everybody wanted to work and gave a whole new host of great creative tools out there. But in doing so, we lost ergonomics. So we brought ergonomics back with this. So we've not really reinvented the wheel. We've just sort of brought one back that people tended to move away from. In terms of the application for the camera, clearly in our minds, looking at 16 mil, documentary purposes were top of the list. After that, independent cinema. So we felt we had something that multiple people could work on, yet a single operator can do this, make all my adjustments, lightweight, it suits both very well. However, you have these in mind and you design a camera and then you put it out and let everybody look at it, and then people will tell you what your product is for, which is marvelous and that's enlightening. There are so many things that you can do, but you are this close to it. Other people can see a bigger picture. For example, we have now very strong interest in using this camera as a studio camera. So our partners at MTF, and they're not the only people doing this, but MTF have produced a B4 adapter mount for the camera. So we have those. This is a G mount by Nikon, but the principle is the same. This will swap out easily on the front and stick a B4 on there. Suddenly it's a studio camera. You want to do ENG, same thing. B4 will go through the, for your ENG purposes. We have EF mounts as well. So for people with lower budgets and want to use their EF lenses, they can do so as well. So that opens up a whole host of new reasons to use it. So nature, uh, commercials, corporate, you know, all this kind of stuff is very, very important to us. And we realized that. But the studio was one of the interesting ones. Outside broadcast. So we know we may have some more technology that we should we, we maybe have to work on, so in terms of CCU. But as you know, we have the remote control working with the web GUI yep. over the land. So there's lots of scope there as well. To return to your point about post as well. So we record ProRes 444 at 12 bits. So when you're at that level, you don't need log. This will give you a very broad dynamic range to then take into post-production. And obviously ProRes, has become the de facto standard. It was once the pretender to the crown, it stood the test of time. You know, 10 years or whatever we've been around. Now I feel old saying that, but I think it's something like that. So the real, the footage that you've seen is, the origin is ProRes UHD 444. Now I did the post-production for that, and there is no grade. That's linear capture by the camera. So not raw, we can output raw, and that's another another world of creativity. It's a whole other ball game. It's crazy. I yeah. mean, we had a great announcement with Adobe. So Cinema DNG is our raw format. We can output that via the four three G SDIs at up to 120 frames a second, or we can come out of the Thunderbolt at up to 30 frames a second. So truly, I mean, it's a powerhouse if you want to do that kind of stuff. Well, just talking about those connections. Um, it seems like, again, in development, you guys have really thought everything through. Um, everything's, it seems to me like everything that one could need for a host of applications, everything's yeah. built in, everything's there, um, and everything's accessible. Um, yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about the connections? Yes, of course, yeah, no problems at all. So, in terms of connectors, first and foremost, they're all standard sized. Now, we have a form factor big enough to support it. These are just far apart enough to make them the case compact, but not too close that you can't undo them, which is key. But we have four 3G SDIs here. This will be for 4K to a live monitoring environment. So the promo clips that you saw with our models, we shot the studio setups with a 4K 
grade one type monitor so we could see our sharps and color detail up close and we did that live okay now when you're powering your EVF as well because we have the power up front we have a down convert here so dedicated if we're in 4k or UHD this is 4k here yep. then we have the HDMI 1.4a also 4k this is another dedicated down convert here then there's another dedicated down convert there and there so working in 4k is two live 4k outputs three down converts and if we span the camera around the confidence monitor as well yep. gives you kind of six in total that's pretty good for a 4k workflow yep. if you want to work in HD and we appreciate that the world turns slowly where oh, some yeah. people are racing against uh, we must have 8k or whatever there's always somebody who's just gone digital so we know that different worlds exist this camera will work in HD. We can even record interlaced material as ProRes. I mean, we've kept that in. It's kind of a legacy, but yep. we know some markets are really into oh, it. Absolutely, yeah. But this Broadcast makes markets. exactly. Yep. They need it corporate as well. Every single output then is live for HD. So that's like I think nine or ten outputs. It's a, it's a very good world to be in if you need lots of output. So that's the connectivity great. is nice. But as I say, key is regular size no mini yeah. converters no no proprietary connectors or exactly yeah, if this is in your chute everything you have in the back of the truck will fit absolutely you know uh, XLRs so it's a balanced audio yep you've got balanced audio you've got 48 volts so phantom power mic and line as well so everything you need great. very high quality converters they are 24 bit 48 kilohertz yep. and a certain low signal to noise anyway. ratio exactly they're really nice quality they're not 96 but they're 48 and they capture great fidelity. On the other side of the camera, we have our BU meters here. So real-time adjustments on set, and we monitor from the top here using the, the headphone uh, adapter. So very easy. Very uh, one other thing I've noticed is that it seems to me like everything's ready to go out the box. Yes. There's no need for cheese plates and um, rig accessories. I mean, although, I mean, Sorry, guys, that make rigs, but um, this everything's sort of sorted out. Everything's ready to go. You've got yeah. Ari rosettes there. You yeah, can bolt the, the handle rosettes. straight on. Yeah. Um, you don't. Other than that, other than some grips, it's like you don't really need much. No, I mean the, the idea with it being is that the bare minimum you can take it out the box, stick a lens on it, stick the EVF on, and get it on your shoulder. You know, kind of crude, but adding the extra armature is going to give you a bit more flexibility. But you can use whatever you prefer and part of the, the display stand that we have here is showing lots of different ways of being able to set the camera up yeah you know so that's very important so you, you can see that over there we produce a full range of accessories ourselves we use 15 mil rods the distance to the center is agreeable with map boxes from any of the major manufacturers and again our guide is showing different ways of, of working here so lots and lots of great scope uh, for accessories as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so price point, what are we looking at? Uh, well, just under $9,000, so 8995 and that will be a two-year warranty. Uh, that's US dollars? That's US dollars. That's great. So very, you know, I think a competitive price. In terms of the output, we really feel like we quite elegantly cover a, a number of markets because we get, in HD and 2K, we sample the full sensor, and we scale. It's not a crop. So that gives a really nice fidelity image. And there are other serious camera manufacturers that have similar technology. It works very well for them. So we have the same thing. That's great. If you work in 4K or UHD, then we just take the full sensor and that's what goes across. So from our point of view, great versatility. If you're joining this camera as a HD user, it's going to be there around the curve. Because the, the way that you can work with it is so versatile and flexible. And the media storage, as we said, is the pack media. These things are 512 gig. So if you work in 4K at the highest quality, it's going to be about 45 minutes. So great recording time. So if you're going to work in HD, well, times it by four. You've got an awful lot of scope. So we think that's a really that's nice right. feature. And can I ask another question? Sure. With the media, um, how much are we looking at for the media? The media is, I think, 695 US for a 256, 1295 for a 512. Um, I think roughly the way to look at it is you will get around four times the media for the same cost as CFast. So CFast obviously being very fast media, yeah. you're limited by size and it's very expensive at the very moment. Expensive. That's quite reasonable, it's I great. I think so, and I think we're well, certainly no worse than any other out there. 
and we will warranty the performance for you. So we say, this will do it every time. Now, I think a lot at the moment, I come from a, a long-term production background. Working with tape or with film, you would never put the least expensive tape or the least expensive film. You make a big amount, uh, you know, it's an inverted pyramid. If production looks like this now, we have all the cost up here, the talent and so on and so forth, and we get down to using hard drives which cost $50. That doesn't make sense no, to us. Yeah. So we warranty the performance. The reason why we have a strip which is removable, 10,000 insertions, I mean, you're never gonna wear it out. Yeah. And also in the field, interestingly, we can drive dailies. So you can playlist this via the web UI and then play all your dailies out from the 4.3 GSDIs to a 4K projector or a TV. Wow. See what you shot during the day and see it in a format which is um, gives you a great idea about where you're going. Where you're so, going, yeah. And also doing, if it's fast enough to record 444, very simple editing in Final Cut 10. So on set doing some simple things, you can do it. Or any other editing system indeed that can access the media. So That's great. Format the media in the camera and away from the camera. Oh, that's great. Nice. That's a great option. Yeah, so yeah. we think that's another thing as well. So, in general, this thing has been designed to carry a form which is entirely functional, and then all the functions inside fit back into that form. It's yeah. a two way process. It's okay, we want to make something ergonomic, and you know what? Make something beautiful. I feel like this is, a, as you said at the top, and we thank you for your comments, so this is a good looking camera. It I is. think it's Absolutely. very. In, a, in an age of boxes, and don't get me wrong, it's hard to make a camera that's a box, let alone one that looks like this. But we felt, this is the first camera from AJA. It's a special thing for us. It's five years of development. And for us, we want to make sure we deliver the best possible product we can. And for us, that's going to be something which is ergonomic, lightweight, functional, beautiful. And we think the image quality matches exactly what you see here, but you can be the judge. <laughs> That's fantastic. Andy, thank you very much very for your welcome. time. Nice We're really nice. looking forward to the uh, to the release of this camera. Fantastic. Guys, it's coming soon. Mm. Andy told me personally soon. it's coming soon. Yeah, it's thanks very much. You're very welcome. All right. Very nice to meet you guys. Thank I hope you. to see you again soon. Thanks, Andy. Thank